Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to a Gothtober recommends type video where I'm going to recommend you books based on the Gothtober prompts. Now if you've seen the main announcement video you will know there are 51 prompts. I am not going to be recommending you 51 books. I'm also not going to be telling you what these prompts are. I would like them to be a surprise. So what I am going to do is recommend you three different sets of books. Ones are that I have read specifically this year and think actually you will adore these. Some are ones that I have read previously and they still work or maybe they're a bit more intense and a bit more high gothic and then I've also got a list of books that I'm really anticipating enjoying that I am hoping to read for Gothtober and therefore you may be able to work out what the key prompts are based on where these books overlap but I've tried to mix up as many prompts as possible because obviously we've never said that you can't double up if you want to double up for Gothtober you're more than welcome to so this is just me recommending some great gothic and horror novels for for you to try for Gothtober this year. So the first book I'm going to be recommending is Blackwater Sister. Now I have no doubt whatsoever that Olivia will probably also include this in her recommendation video as this was the book that she chose last year for the giveaway and I tried it based on that alone. I'd never heard anything about it before. This is basically about a young woman who is Malay American and she has born and like basically been raised in America. She doesn't know a lot about her Malay heritage but when her dad loses his job and moves back to Malaysia she moves with him to kind of help him settle in and moves back with her mum and she's kind of confronted with this mythos and culture that she knows very little about. However, one of the things that is kind of embedded in this mythology is how they treat spirits and what they expect spirits to do. And when a dark mark starts appearing in her room, she realises she is being basically haunted by her grandmother who has recently passed away. And then the book just gets wild. Like this one really lures you into a full sense of security. It makes you think that it's going to be a very gentle traditional type gothic and then bam there's ghosts and there's mobs and there's like violence and like murder and like revenge and it, it just like this book is so packed with interesting tropes and very final girl isms that I just I can't I can't stop talking about it. It was a five star book for me this year. I'm so pleased Olivia chose this for the giveaway because it was so good and I just need everyone else to read it as well now. Please go away, read Blackwater Sister, it's amazing and it ticks off so many of the prompts. Next is Horrid which is a ghost story that I read back in January for Lamentable Library. This is a YA ghost story. So this is about a young girl who moves back to Maine. There's a lot of moving, there's a lot of moving in gothic fiction, there's a lot of like new settings, that's generally a trope anyway. But she moves back to Maine with her mum, back to where her mum grew up and there is definitely some skeletons in the closet. There are some secrets that her mum is keeping from her, people in town are being really weird and eventually you find out why and like this whole mystery unfolds and it has a really interesting like dynamic a really interesting ending that I really enjoyed and if you like a classic YA ghost story I would absolutely recommend you read Horrid. If you want straight up final girl slasher vibes I would recommend A Clown in a Cornfield. This is a modern slasher by an author who clearly really enjoys their genre. Once again a girl moves to this rural town. She doesn't know anyone but she settles in quite quickly but again the town has secrets and something very strange starts to go on and when this really creepy fucking clown starts appearing in places that it shouldn't be and killing people it gets real bloody real quickly but it is very similar it's very reminiscent of the film um scream which is one of my favorite horrors of all time like it's just a good time it moves very quickly the pace of this is very quick but i really like that it takes some of like the woke culture and i'm air quoting the woke part because i think genuinely it's just being a decent human being but it takes some of that it takes like gen z stuff and kind of adds it to what is a very 80s style horror trope and i really like the mix of that in this the stakes are high people die your favorite character will probably be one of them and that's just a heads up Obviously one of my favourite books of this year already has been The Beautiful Ones but this is a far more gentle gothic. This is a modern gothic, this only came out like a year or so ago and this is by Silva Morella Garcia who is the same author that did Mexican gothic which was really popular in the first gothtober. I don't know why The Beautiful Ones hasn't been as popular, it's so 
good. This is a love triangle between Nina, Hector and Valerie. Hector is basically a magician, he is a uh, he is telekinetic and he is able to kind of create illusions using his telekinesis. Nina is also telekinetic but she doesn't quite know how to use her powers and she's starting to get a reputation for being a witch. Valerie is Hector's ex-girlfriend. They were in love with each other 10 years ago. Unfortunately, she married Nina's cousin, who is just the most boring man on the planet. And Valerie very much wants to kind of rekindle this romance with Hector, whilst also keeping this very lavish lifestyle that she's living in. And in the meantime, Hector has started courting Nina, because Nina's like really into him, and it just gets so complicated. Like it's such a like telenovela drama, um, but with like really decently embedded stakes, really romantic characters, really gentle writing. And my favourite character is a character called Etienne, who is best friends with Hector and he just needs a nap. Like he's just the cutest. He just, he is such a classic French aristocrat and it's just, oh, I just love him. And he's so great. So um, yes, if you want something a bit more gentle, less horror-y, uh, less spooky, but still has those tropes, still has the gothic tropes, still has the gothic elements and definitely has the romance, would recommend, would recommend. I don't know. I'm looking, none of my other recommendations have romance as like a key theme, whereas this is very much the key theme of this. So bear that in mind for the rest of my recommendations to come. Next is Grimrose Girls. This is a dark academia fairy tale mix about a bunch of girls who kind of are staying at this very elite boarding school and unfortunately their friends are starting to die and they will need to work out very quickly why and their magic very much ties into some classic fairy tale tropes whilst having some very horror themes, violence etc. What I really like about this is it counts for your LGBT and disability rep because one of them has chronic pain, there are also BIPOC characters and there are several sapphic relationships in this. Like it's just, it ticks all three. There you go, perfect. <laughs> Another classic slasher by an author who loves slashers is My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. I did all of Stephen Graham Jones's books that I could get my hands on this year and this was by far my favourite. It is a classic slasher about a young girl who is obsessed with slasher films, who lives by the lake and basically is trying to explain to the people around her that one of the slasher monsters that she is reading about has come true and is starting to kill people and no one really believes her until the bodies start piling up. It has some really dark plot twists. I would definitely check out the trigger warnings for this one because it does get wild and it does dig into sexual assault so bear that in mind but it is a really fun really fast-paced slasher book and it's just a yeah it's a really good time. And finally, of books that I've read this year that I would recommend for Gothtober, I would go with The Hollow Places. This is a dark, twisted horror which follows a young girl, a young woman who has just divorced her husband and moves back into this really creepy museum with her uncle. And when he takes a fall, she basically has to look after this uh, museum by herself. And creepy things start to happen. And I don't want to go too much into what happens because it kind of would give too much of the story away. That's basically the first two chapters that I've explained to you anyway. After that, it gets real dark real quick. But there are monsters in the dark that are coming for her. And just when you think everything is going to be fine, you realise you still have 150 pages to go and it's it's intense, it's high paced. It has a really nice balance of classic horror tropes, gothic tropes and modern writing. Now I'm going to go through the recommendations that I have probably recommended before but would work really well for this year's set of prompts. First is Deathless Girls, which is a Dracula retelling about the wives of Dracula. This is set in Romania. It's a YA. It's really, really pretty. It's really, really dark. And I really like that it has a balance of classic mythology of Dracula mixed with BIPOC rep, sapphic rep. And I think one of the characters is disabled, but don't hold me to that because I can't remember. It's been a while since I've read this. I love Kiri Mawad Hargrave's writing. I think she's got a really expert writing style when it comes to gothic without it being really dense and really heavy so as like an intro to gothic I always recommend the Deathless Girls because it's based on a classic but it also has the mixture of prompts and like it has a mixture of writing that we can understand and relate to and empathize with as a modern audience and I really appreciate that. 
However, if you wanted to read the classic of Dracula, that one would also work for this year's Gothopa. Some other classic gothic novels that are also nice and short and therefore would work, not only for these prompts, but just in general to try for some gothic fiction. I would include The Picture of Dorian Gray, which is a very short, fast paced gothic novel that has LGBT rep. Northanger Abbey, which is essentially Jane Austen's parody of gothic and does have romance elements in it, but is mainly a ghost story around a castle. And then I would also recommend Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which is one of the shortest gothic novels there is. It's a really interesting one because obviously we as modern audiences understand who they are and what the whole plot twist is going to be. Um, but if you haven't read this one, definitely give it your time because it's a really interesting, intriguing mystery and it ticks off quite a few of the prompts for this year's Gothtober. Going back to books that I have read previously that I would still recommend for this year's Gothtober, we have If We Were Villains. This is a dark academia novel set at a university which te teaches exclusively Shakespeare. And we start basically 10 years after some really insidious events have happened where a man is being released from prison and finally talks to the police officer who arrested him about what really happened, who was murdered, why they were killed, and what were the events that led up to that situation. It's like I said, really dark, really insidious, very slow paced, very indulgent, classic dark academia, would recommend a hundred times. Then we have Even If We Break, which also has BIPOC, LGBT and disability rep in it. This is about a group of friends who have been playing a role game together, but they've started keeping secrets. They're starting to do insidious things. Some of them have drug problems. Some of them have other lies and things that they're keeping from each other. And they're, they're playing their final session. And when someone starts killing them off, they realise quite quickly that it is one of their friends who is killing them and they don't know who. It is really, really dark. It is really, really dark. It's really, really fun though. And then another dark academia novel that has very much culty claustrophobia vibes. It has kind of elitism, BIPOC rep, disability rep, mental health rep, but it is a very, very slow paced, slow burn novel is Catherine House. I fucking love this book. It is so good. It's so insidious and it is such a perfect encapsulation of what a modern gothic should be and how a dark academia will really sink into your soul, break it and then go, whoops, sorry, didn't mean to do that with the most insidious, innocent looking face. Honestly, like it's a beautiful book. It's so well crafted and I can't find enough people to recommend it to. So if you need a elitist, BIPOC rep filled, uh, sapphic relationship, relate like just all of it, all of it is good, all of it is clever, all of it is insidious and then it has great rep as well, like what's not to love. And then like I said I've got some books that I would like to talk about but these aren't straight recommendations, I've not read them yet, I don't know what the trigger warnings for them are, I don't know if they're any good or not, they're just ones that I'm really excited for and that I am hoping to squeeze onto my TBR for Gothtober. The first one I'm going to talk about is Belladonna by Adeline Grace. This is about a young girl who is orphaned, who has been living with a string of strangers and kind of neighbours um, until she reaches a certain age and then she's kind of haunted by the spirit of her mother. I don't, much, I don't know much more about it than that. I just really like that there are a lot more gothic YA novels coming to the forefront because it sounds really interesting and the cover is beautiful. Then we have The Mad Woman's Ball, which is set in late 18th or early 19th century France about a um, asylum full of women who are kind of left there by rich relatives um, because they're either dangerous it's not really anything to do with mental health, but essentially every year there is this ball and these women are auctioned off to people. And it sounds really insidious. There is a sapphic relationship in this. And I just think it's so beautiful. I have been actively not picking this up so I could save it for Gothtober because it just sounds so good. Then we have a really nice short read that I'm excited to get to and that is Rizzio by Denise Mina. This is a historical fiction about um, Mary Queen of Scots whose husband sets up to have someone that she cares about murdered right in front of her over dinner and this is basically a short story about that dinner unfolding and that kind of really gruesome event and again the events that led up to it why he's done that why he did he wanted to do that revenge plots etc it just it sounds wild and i'm really excited to get to this one 
something a little bit different and a little bit cuter is Wish You Weren't Here, which is by the same author who did the Darkwood series, which I read this year and became absolutely obsessed with. This is about a ghost hunting family that travel around um, and kind of find ghosts, kind of look for paranormal activity. And it's about a young girl kind of in that family experiencing that life. And it just gives me um ghost faces vibes maybe with a little bit of cassidy blake mixed in uh, this is a middle grade it's a very cute little middle grade i imagine it will be quite a cute little ghost story it may even have little vampire vibes but for ghosts either way i'm here for it and i really enjoy just the the whole vibe of that cover and i also for some reason they've got a tesco's carrier bag on the front i'm not sure why but i can't wait to find out house of hollow has been recommended to me so many times so many times and I still haven't read it but I'm really excited to. I don't actually remember a whole lot about this other than the fact that it's about the Hollow Sisters. I think one of them goes missing or two of them go missing and weird shit starts to happen um, but it looks insidious and I've been told that I will love it so I'm adding it to the list. And then finally we have Tea Apollo Blue. We have another Dark Academia novel. This is about a art professor who's been teaching at either Cambridge or Oxford and he kind of has a mental break when some modern art is brought into the campus and he doesn't want it there and he loses his job and then he starts working either at a museum as a curator or alongside a curator and basically he starts to have a romantic relationship with this man, goes on a journey of self-discovery. There's a lot of like knowledge based stuff in this, but some stuff from his past then comes to bite him in the ass and like a whole bunch of stuff's gonna happen. I am actually reading this for September. By the time this video is out, I will hopefully have already read it, but it is one that I haven't quite got to yet. I'm very excited for and yes, hopefully can get to it soon. So there you go, some recommendations for Gothtober. Do you think there are any gothic books that I've missed that I need to have on my list that I've not read yet? Or have you read something gothic this year that you think having played the game you think would work for some of those prompts? Let me know in the comments down below. If you just want to let me know you were here, leave a little skull in the in the comments down below. Treat yourself to something from Waypoint because it helps support me and my content. And more importantly, have a nice day.